And with that, we're live. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It is Friday. That's right. It's Friday. It's the end of the work week. How are you? How was your How was your work week? How did it go for you? I mean, for me, well, it was busy, and that's a good thing. You know, you got to stay busy. It uh, had its ups, it had its downs, and of course, you know, as you're trying to exit out the door, there's always going to be phone calls. There's going to be people needing things. There's going to be people wanting things, and it's like you know they had all week to do it. But well, it happens. All right. So that being said, that being said, um, it's Forbes Friday. That's what we do here on Fridays. This is what we do on Fridays, Forbes Friday. So let's get started. So uh, what's what's on tap? We we tapped the uh, website. We tapped the dot com. We tapped uh, where is everything? There we go. Sorry about that. We tapped the dot com. We tapped the, we tapped the website. We tapped the magazines. We tapped everything, everything that they give, everything that they offer, everything that they sell, manufacture, produce, or produce, sell, manufacture, whatever they're selling. But you don't want to manufacture or produce anything. You just want to sell it. A lot of, lot of trouble in that. That's from that movie, Say Anything. Great movie. If you haven't seen it, folks, great movie. So, oh, and then there we go. I just did it again. All right. Where is it? Oh, geez. There we go. Sorry about that. So first thing up on tap, tonight's topic, I guess, is uh, drinking your own Kool-Aid. Drinking your own Kool-Aid. And folks, uh, organizations do that, and they, they, they hype themselves up, they build themselves up, and then poof, there you go. Uh, individuals do that. They're notorious for do that. We're human beings. That's what, that's what we do. We, we build ourselves up, and, and sometimes we believe it, and we drink our own Kool-Aid, and we get found out that, wait a minute, we were found lacking at that point. So it happens because we are humans, because we do do what we do and we do it so well. So that's what we do. Okay. So there we go. Topic for for Friday. Uh, I don't know. You've probably seen those commercials, the uh, stationary bikes, Peloton, right? And you got the little screen and you're actually interacting with somebody someplace else in some studio someplace else or or some spa or some fitness center someplace else, and they're streaming the workout session, and you're joining them, and it's giving them real-time feedback back to them wherever their headquarters are. Well, guess what? They went public. What does that mean? Well, they uh, got listed. They got listed on the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ or whatever it was. I don't see what it was, but they got listed yesterday, and they they went public, and investors sent its shares. Guess we're get, get ready for it. Backpedaling. And uh, dropping 11.2% in a day. Well, what does that say? Well, here, here's a quote from the CEO. We've always assumed that going public would be a step along the way of getting to where we want to go, says John Foley, 48, Peloton CEO and co-founder. We still believe we're on the first of the we're on we're on the first out of the first inning of where we're going to take where we want to take this business. And usually you hear about the good stuff, you know, the, these companies they go public. And their stocks go through the roof instantly. People are millionaires, billionaires, and just awesome. But then again, you hear the the the, the downside of things. And because there is downside, there's always up, there's always a down. That's just the way it is. That being the case, in this case with Peloton, well, I guess the public wasn't ready for that. It was more of like, this is a flash in a pan, and I kind of see it as that. It's not, they're not a Schwinn, they're not a Huffy. You know, bike makers, bicycle makers. You know, they, these they do high tech, very niche, very specific, very well. Maybe not the time to go public. I understand you need to raise capital, you need to raise money. And the only way sometimes you can do it, you go through angel investors and and other investments, and you go through rounds of investment. But eventually, you know, even those investors are going to want to see a return on their investment. And so sometimes the logical step to do is for more, most organizations is to go public, the initial public offering of stocks to the public. Now it makes it now it makes the company accountable to the shareholders, not just the investors, now the shareholders, now the general public's involved. And from the sounds like it's the company, the, the organization, the public wasn't ready for what the company was bringing to the table. And the organization, somebody was selling them a load of something because they didn't get what they thought they were going to get. And so that's where it comes in. You drink your own Kool-Aid. You start believing your own, your own narrative. And it's like, wait a minute. You know, the only person that truly needs to believe the narrative is the people that are investing in any organization. And, and that being the case, though, the CEO definitely has to believe in the organization and believe that it has its ups and its downs because that's what CEOs are supposed to do. They're there from the beginning. They're there to the end in a perfect world. 
But now what's it going to do for the CEO, John Foley? It could be he's on his way out. Something to think about there, folks. So again, be careful when you're drinking your own Kool-Aid. It might not be, it might be a little sour and not as sweet as you think it's gonna be. Now, speaking of what the public wants, what the public doesn't want, is the public ready? Well, we want to be, quote, we want to be a company that is the operating system for your daily life, end quote, vowed Uber CEO Dara Kashro, Kashro Sahi, Kashro Sahi, unveiling a change to the company's app that better combines its ride hailing and food delivery services. So I mentioned this earlier over the summer. It's a great idea. It's fantastic. I mean, you're, they, they are already out there. They're already driving around. So why not deliver food? It makes sense. Perfect sense. It's a great idea. So now they're saying, okay, well, now we're going to really, really tweak our app. And again, what does that say? The public obviously is ready for it. The public believes in it. And they're answering the call of the public. So here, this, this organization is listening to the public, its customers, its external stakeholders. Meanwhile, Peloton was listening to somebody else because they were not paying attention to their stakeholders and potential stockholders. And, and well, they found out 11.2, that's, that's terrible. Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about is one of the United Kingdom's major political parties has made the idea of a four day work week, a campaign pledge and uh, wishful thinking for a welcome step. Uh, wishful thinking or a welcome step, British business owners, they weigh in on that. And there's a pros and cons, yes. Business, four days a week, yeah, I I understand it. The, the, the workers want it, but are they ready to put in 10 hour work days? And are those fringe hours going to be productive? And the fringe hours, meaning, uh, let's just say everybody's nine to five, straight through nine to five, no lunch. And the fringe hours then would be, you know, eight to six. That's 10 hour days right there. What happens on those fringe hours? Do they work? Do they just waste time? Are they burning time? Are they gonna find out that eventually that's not going to work for them? So whatever happens, it's gonna be found out. And it's a great idea. There's books, the four hour work week. Um, oh, I forgot the gentleman's name, but great books. And the concept, and I've, I've toyed with the idea of a four-day work week, and it works for organizations that don't have to or don't support other organizations and other entities and other stakeholders that are seven days a week, 24-7. So you see what I'm saying? Uh, and I'm talking about if your company supports, say, uh, the prison system or the medical uh the medical community, you know, because people are always getting hurt. People are in hospitals 24 seven hospitals, never closed, that kind of thing. The police departments, fire departments, if your organization supports that, how is that going to really benefit your organization? Uh, if you're very much in the retail, how is that going to support, you know, are you going to actually close or are you going to be open, but all the employees have those staggered three, three days off, four days on. Something to think about, and it's it's pretty interesting. I wouldn't mind seeing it actually coming into play and having a major organization buy into it and say, you know what, we're going to give it a shot, and then we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, a lot of listening to people. Maybe this or maybe this political party in the UK is just giving what giving into the people, giving them what they think they want, and sometimes what the public wants, the public doesn't need, and that's a fact. So with that being said. Have a great weekend. Have a great rest of your evening. Um, I'll talk to you on Monday. We're talking sports and leadership again. And in the meantime, um, wherever you're at, stay safe, be good. And if you can't be good, at least be careful. All right, and if you can't be careful, well, don't get caught. Anyway, have a great weekend. I'll talk to you soon.